everybody welcome back to the intellectual corner of my bedroom in today's video i thought that i would give you a bookshelf tour um and then just sort of go through the books that i own and why i own them a little story time maybe about like each of the books that i own maybe not each of the books but i'll go through whether or not i've read them whether i like them why i bought it etc um as you can see here this is basically all of the books that i own um i don't really own that many books you might look at this collection and think oh that's a lot of books or you might think that isn't many books to me they all fit into the one shelf i feel like if i start sort of doubling up on shelves and like having to put books sort of like on top of each other that's when i maybe have too many books or maybe i should just invest in like a bigger bookshelf i don't know as you can see i have my books in color order as well because of the limited amount of books that i own uh if i try to put it in alphabetical order of the author it just looks weird it doesn't it just doesn't look nice so i put it back into color order because that's what looked nicest to me i wanted to make this video because i like talking about books maybe uh i wanted to force myself to read more basically um and i figured this would be shut the fuck up this would be a really good way for me to do so if i like make a video about it and then i can introduce y'all to books books you ever heard of them let's start off with the first book here this is a red book and it has to go back up into the shelves but I finished reading this last night this is Brave New World by Aldous Huxley and I liked it when discussing with my friends how many books we wanted to do for like the Goodreads reading challenge I was like yeah I want to do 20 books this is the first book that I've read in the year and when I told my friend that I was reading Brave New World she was like why and basically I don't know I like reading classics um, a lot of my friends will read like contemporary or young adult books and I'm just like not into them. I don't know. The way that I see it, there are so many classics in the world and every contemporary writer that you would want to be reading right now have gotten their influences from classic authors. So I figured I should start with the classic authors and then when I end up finishing the classic authors that I want to read, when I get to the contemporary writers, I will understand their influences and understand sort of where they're coming from, sort of where the trend and the genre started just nerd shit like that dude this is a book about people basically being clones and being real dumb uh, I believe it was written probably after the influence of Henry Ford because they keep mentioning Ford and how now they've made humans into a production line and yeah I would recommend this book if you like sort of dystopian futures it's sort of macabre not macabre it's it's nice i like the writing style of this one let's put it into the red section going on towards actually onto the top shelf um at the top i just have some nintendo switch games so i have the zelda the smash brothers the pokemon the mario kart comment down your friend codes down below and we can be friends and then you can beat my ass in mario kart because i'm very bad at it and then moving on to the actual books that we have we have fahrenheit 451 uh i think this is the next book that i want to read because it looks kind of small and if i can get this done it'll make me feel like i'm on a roll with everything and then whatever so i'm gonna leave this one out we just put back brave new world i have the handmaid's tale i had to read this for uni um I like The Handmaid's Tale and where it sort of left off in the story. I haven't really watched the Hulu, Hulu, Amazon, whoever made it. I haven't watched the series of it. I think I watched like the first episode. I don't like the idea of having there being like an extended universe. I very much believe in sort of death of the author, I guess, where the universe that exists within the book should just sort of live there. I don't really want any sort of like bigger universe made out of it so i don't really care for the series i don't know next we have ernest hemingway i'll probably read that after um fahrenheit 451 because look how tiny this boy is um we have to kill a mockingbird i was one of the people who never had to read this for school or anything like that so i never read it we have Beloved by Toni Morrison. Read it for uni. I liked it. It was kind of, it was pretty disturbing and grotesque at parts, but I think that's the point of it. I would recommend it. It's, you know, written by a black woman and I think that there should be more sort of diversity in classic literature. So, highly recommend it. I have The Wind Up Bird Chronicle by Haruki Murakami. I, when I bought this book, I was under the impression that all Murakami,
Army would be good because everyone was, you know, recommending Franza Kafka, <laughs> Franz Kafka by the sea, by the beach, nine Q one one Q nine eight four. 9 Queen 84, whatever that one is. And then everyone was also recommending Norwegian Wood or whatever like that. I think I went in to the bookstore at the time and didn't see any of those books. So I was like, I'll pick up the next Murakami that I can find, which was the Wind Up Bird Chronicle. I could not finish this. It just went on and on and on. And I, th it wasn't a good sort of introduction to Murakami for me because in my mind I'm just sort of bitter about this guy being just like a super boring author just talking about having some weird out-of-body experience and talking to a 13 year old girl even though you're a 30 man 30 year old man I think I would maybe visit some other Murakami before trying to come back to this book I think I came within like maybe 50 pages of the end and I just couldn't I couldn't do it. I couldn't bring myself to do it because it was just so boring. It was so painful to read. And you can see from like the edges of the book, like I really tried. I put it in my bag all the time so that I could be like, oh, I'll read it on the way to wherever. But I just, I couldn't do it. Couldn't. Uh, we have Jules Verne, The 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Haven't read it. Uh, I have Kurt Vonnegut, Breakfast, Breakfast of Champions and Slaughterhouse Five. Um, I read both of them and I really like them. I really enjoy um, Vonnegut's sort of writing style, I guess. That sort of like punchy, sarcastic, um, really sort of to the point writing. I think that it sort of influenced my own writing in some occasions. When I do end up writing, I write very much sort of punchy to the point um, stuff like that. That's another reason why I also like classic literature more than I like contemporary because I feel like once you've read a wide range it'll influence your own work so not only does it influence you know contemporary writers of the time it can also influence your own so if you're well read then I can be a better writer etc. Um, we have Catcher in the Rye again one of those books where I never had to read it for high school or anything like that um, but everyone says that it's okay. I have a tiny little copy here of George Orwell's Animal Farm. Really small book. Really liked it. Yeah, everyone likes it. It's it's an easy read. It's fun. You you get to call the bureaucrats pigs. It's it's really good. Uh, we have Catch 22. Haven't read it. We have Extremely Close and Extremely Loud, Incredibly Close by Jonathan Safran Boa. I like this book. I think I at the time I really enjoyed it and I cried a lot. And it, you know it has pictures throughout the book. The book is sort of like annotated but it's printed in a way to make it look like someone else has gotten the book and annotated it. Jonathan Safranfell is like a really sort of interesting writer but this book is, is about like an autistic child sort of dealing with his the death of his father after 9-11 so it can be a heavy one and it kind of can be weirdly poetic because it's trying to sort of find meaning in an event that didn't really have a reason behind it or like didn't really have an understandable reason behind it I don't know it read it it's a really nice book it makes you feel things I have one flew over the cuckoo's nest I haven't read it uh, I bought this one recently it's Marcus Aurelius meditations I don't know Roman Emperor he tells you some shit about life and philosophy my friend read it and I'm like wow you're so smart I want to impress you I'll read this book as well uh, we have Wuthering Heights I've read this. This is a decent enough book, but I think, you know, The Song by Kate Bush, it summarizes the plot perfectly, so why bother with the book? We have A Clockwork Orange. I really used to like this book when I was like younger. A lot of these books were bought at a time when I was like in year 10, year 10, 11 and 12, where I was like, oh, I'm so intellectual. I have a Tumblr account, so now I read books now. Oh, I'm so cool. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just sitting down uh, near the library reading a book with all of my no friends. We have Junkie by William S. Burroughs. Haven't read it. We have How Language Works by David Crystal. Um, we have the Allen Ginsberg, How Kaddish, other poems. Pretty sad. Um, Sonia Hartnett of a Boy. Haven't read it. High Fidelity. Haven't read it. Lolita. I read it when I was a teenager, again, probably in like year 11. Really liked it. Bitches really be like, oh, this is my favorite book. Oh. But I don't really get that because it's kind of gross to me. Um, I have two copies of 1984. 
Um, I also have another third copy down on the lower shelf. Um, I read it, I liked it. Um, we have another Kurt Vonnegut, this is Cat's Cradle. Um, I have The Surgeon of Cointreau, never read it. Um, I have another Jonathan Safran Foer book, this is Here I Am. I haven't read it yet because it's so hefty and so big and I'm like... <sighs> don't really want to put myself through that yet. Um, I have a biography of Henry Rollins from Black Flag, because you know how I be. We have The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. Um, I think I bought this like in the Philippines maybe one time um, while I was like over there with my family and I was bored and I bought a book and it was kind of sad. It's sort of like an easy enough read. I, I would probably recommend it. Um, we have Virginia Woolf Orlando. <laughs> Haven't read it. Day of the Triffids. I want to read it. I have this little book here, which is, uh, I guess, a transcribed conversation between Kurt Vonnegut and Lee Stringer. Um, they're just sort of talking about writing. I think I read some of it. It was interesting. It's an interesting conversation between the two of them. Um, I have Eleanor Dark, Return to Cool Me, an Australian author. They're talking about driving through Parramatta Road and going over the mountains and I'm like, oh, I do that. Um, I have this book here which is a collection of English ballads. This was actually a like book of my grandpa's so this is basically just like the reading collection of my grandfather's and um i don't know i kept it because i thought it was like a nice little momento i have this book here it's called the tapestry i have the first book right here so this is the first book this is the second book i read the first book when i was sort of young and i liked it enough i don't know it was one of, it's one of those like young adult books where it's like oh it's a magical boy and he goes to a magical school and he has a magical pet sort of riding off of the coattails of harry potter and all that kind of stuff i probably wouldn't read them again if anything they're sort of just here to add sort of diversity into the color range so i feel like if i end up getting any other books i'm gonna donate those same with this one here this is fangirl by rainbow rowell another young adult book I don't really care for it. I read it and it was cute, but at the same time it was it was really juvenile. She's like, oh I can't wait to like touch this boy's hand and like hold it. And I'm like, bitch, you're in university. Suck a dick already. Um I have Adult Lessons by Gabby Hanna, the famous YouTuber. Um this is very much sort of like egghead from Bo Burnham where it's sort of like a collection of actually sad jokes and actually funny jokes and you know drawings and poems all throughout it. Not to say that she copied Bo Burnham but she has copied a Bo Burnham joke before so Whew. The Boy in Striped Pajamas read it when I was a kid got sad. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy this is a collection of like all four of the books. Um, I've only read the first one I haven't read the others Oops. But again, I like Douglas Adams' like writing style, sort of to the point, punchy, funny. The 100 year old man who climbed out the window and never returned, whatever, um, disappeared, sorry. Uh, read sort of half of it, and then I was like, this is unbelievable. How can a 100 man year old man get out of his room and just like do this shit? That sounds, that sounds fake. Um, we have Sylph, haven't read it. Uh, oh, another book that's sort of just there to break up the color. Basically like, children's version of like I think it's children's version it's basically like children's fantasy but instead of like having there be humans all of the characters are basically like anthropomorphic animals it's like Beatrix Potter but if she got into like fantasy novels I have the Virginia Woolf's room of one's own I've read it Great Gatsby haven't read it um, I have another youtuber book Connor Franta note to self i basically just got this because it looked really pretty um i think a lot of people got it because it looked really pretty i like looking at like the photos in it and stuff like that um i have this one book by alexis wright another australian author um haven't read it my bad i'm sorry uh okay we are down on the ground now um for the last shelf of books i have more books down here um but these are books that when i was sort of rearranging everything i was like i'm not gonna keep these i'm gonna end up either selling them or donating them to wherever like some of the textbooks that i have from uni um, I'm gonna see about trying to sell those otherwise I can just sort of donate the rest and then basically here is just sort of the black and white books 
that I own because I have The Hobbit. This is the movie poster version of the book. I know that there are like prettier sort of covers of the book and I wish that maybe I bought those ones instead. Uh, it is what it is. I have this one. Um, because I'm a very serious reader, I have The Meowmorphosis, which was one of the parody books that were really popular in like 2011 where it's basically just a parody of Metamorphosis, but he turns into a kitten. It's so much cuter than being turned into a cockroach. Are you kidding? So it's filled with such great photos like this. Your little cat. Um, I have Charles Dickens' Great Expectations. I think I read half of it. Couldn't really get into it. I should probably try reading it again. Um, we have Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I read it. I had to read it for high school, so therefore it is annotated to heck. Uh, I have Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Read that for uni. I actually have two copies of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So I have Penguin's classic version and then I have just like this shitty cheap version that I found at like Aldi one time. Um, I have a copy, oh my god stop, I have a copy of The Picture of uh, Dorian Gray, uh, read that for school. I have A Turn of the Screw by Henry James, I had to read that for uni. Um, I have The Book Thief by Marcus Usak. I have The Messenger by Marcus Usak. I read both of these in high school and I really liked them. We have Milk and Honey, The Cigarettes in this poem be like I've only read like a couple of poems like here and there it's a book of poetry you can pick it up and set it down it doesn't matter um, I have a copy of we need to talk about Kevin didn't read it of the books that have fallen down I have Jonathan Safran Foer's eating animals this book is about eating animals it's basically like a, a research essay into I guess the health effects um, the global sort of environmental effects that animal agriculture has on the world, on your body, etc. And it also ties in sort of um, personal accounts of sort of traditional cooking in his life, like um, sort of like traditional meat dishes that, you know, bring together a family and how not eating animals and not eating meat can sort of take you away from that sort of sense of family that you have and that sort of sense of culture that you have around eating like meat and stuff like that so it's a really interesting book um again Jonathan Safran Foer he's a really interesting writer like I don't know he breaks he breaks the pages up like really well this page is like the first page like a lot of the pages will be sat out like this like title pages and it'll be sort of like a very graphic design of a statistic so there's this with like this little sliver taken out and it's Americans choose to eat less than 0.25 percent of known edible food on the planet which is freaking wild so i don't know it, it's a very interesting book even if you don't care about being vegetarian or vegan or anything like that i just recommend it because it goes in sort of the history of how i guess like factory farming started apparently a woman just accidentally ordered too many chicks one time and was like oh instead of sending these chickens back i'm gonna find a way to fit it into my small ass barn i have a copy here of american psycho uh, i think i started reading this in high school again it was one of those books that was really gross and disgusting to me so i kept it into my bag like the whole time you can see from like the tattered edges i really really tried to read this and i think i got maybe half more than halfway through I just couldn't finish it because it was just like so grotesque to me at the time. The last three books that I have here are just like old tattered copies that I found at like op shops and stuff like that. So I have a copy of Lord of the Fry, <laughs> Lord of the Flies, sorry. Um, I have another copy of Brave New World. Um, this is sort of like a very teeny tiny, very weathered sort of copy of it. So that's why I ended up buying like a different newer copy of it so that I didn't have to worry so much about breaking that book where I would have been so concerned about destroying this book. This last one is a copy of 1984 that my friend Caitlin uh, bought for me one time. I think it was, I don't know, on sale at like an op shop or I think she like found it somewhere but like the spine is all tattered so again I don't want to like touch it and break it or anything like that. I'm a comfortable reader. I'll bend a spine all the way back. I'm sorry I know that that's really sacrilegious to say but I do that and I don't want to do that to like these books because they're just sort of cute little little points in time I guess. So that is basically everything that I have on my bookshelf. Um, again as you can see not a lot of these books have been read by me. I'm sorry I'm working on it. Um, my Goodreads goal for 2019 oh my god is to read 20 books and I am five percent the way done uh considering i read one book 
and we are now in March. So I'm going really well. Um, if you guys have any sort of book suggestions for me, anything that you think that I might read from guessing from what I already own and what I sort of gravitate towards to from looking at all of this, please leave them down in the comments below. Um, tell me why you like it. Or like why it resonated with you give me a reason as to why you're recommending it to me uh, like I said the next book that I'm going to read is going to be Fahrenheit 451 um, and yeah if you like this video please give it a thumbs up um, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you like it um, let me know if you want to see more book content in the future and I'll be sure to make some more otherwise I will just see you guys in my next video bye